I'm at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival, thanks to Form Next, and I'm here with my buddy Nathan. What's up? What's up, Nathan? This is an incredible 3D printer. This is a shiny beast of a machine. But before we get to the machine, I really want to let people know, this is Nathan. You might know him from another piece of hardware that is pretty well known within the 3D printing world. Nextruder? The Nextruder, that's right. You worked at Prusa, and you were responsible for the Nextruder. Yes. I love the Nextruder. Thank you. You did a good job with That's it. That's my baby. That is my boy. It does flex really yeah, well. It does flex really, it does flex really well. Yeah. But but you took that knowledge, yeah. you took that that wonderful brain of yours, and you put it to work on something that I would like to say is overbuilt and over engineered, mm -hmm. but in the best possible way. Thank you. What do you call it? Stone Wolf, or just Wolf. Stone Wolf. Wolf, like huff huff wolf. That's a great name for it. Thank you. This machine is easily probably one of the coolest things that you see here at the Rep Rap Festival. It's got shiny metal parts, beautiful 3D printed parts, like part cooling that could set wind just going. So tell me about the Stone Wolf. What, what is the build volume here? 300 by 300. By? 300. Okay. Uh, right now we have a little bit longer hot end, maybe 295, but in the end we can get the 300 out of okay. it. Okay. It's Cartesian flying gantry. Meaning what? Uh, Cartesian motion system, meaning uh, direct motor, pulling axis, no mixing of motors, uh, such as Core XY. Oh, okay, Mo one motor controls one axis. Yes. Okay. And diagonal movements are also very fast and short belt lengths, et cetera. Okay. And flying gantry, meaning what? Uh, bed stays still on the bottom and the entire gantry, meaning XY plane, uh, rises up like a Voron. That's where I got the inspiration. Oh, from the Voron, okay. The that's king. A, that, that's a great non-company, I love Voron. Yeah, right. Uh, the, why did you go with this this machined look. Like this is this is a polished metal. You could get away with extrusion. You could get away with other metals. Mm -hmm. And you didn't even have to do these nice organic movements. What was it in your brain that made you go with this design? It was only performance. It's actually not polished. This is just the surface of the mill. The mill has a very good tolerance. It's a two meter diameter head. Oh. And this is simply the best material input that I could find on the face of the planet. It's 0 0.1 millimeter deviation per meter. Oh. Uh, stays flat, it's stress relieved, cast, then milled. Uh, but also we produce it in Czech it, it, very well. So in Czech they do good plate, good milled plate. Uh, maybe here they do good tube and welding tube, good bicycle industry here in USA, right? Yeah, there is. Yeah. So if I build it here, we will. Then maybe we do welded tubes. I'm American, you know, I'm coming back. I, I think America needs another high speed locally produced printer. Now high speed, this is really interesting because in our initial talks here, when you mentioned high speed, we talked about Vez 3D, mm. who is known for those high speed 3D printing videos. Mm. And in your words, you were faster. Yeah, I think, <laughs> okay, let's face it, he's my idol. <laughs> he's my idol, and I was, I was chasing him for years. I'm not sure who's chasing who anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And he's my friend, I would like to have a competition. But last time, he didn't post another video after I did mine. So if you're there, let's All go. Right, let's 3D. go, buddy. You've let's been, go. The gauntlet has been yeah, thrown. Yeah. Show me oh, what man. you got. Okay, so 300 by 300 by 300. Yep. The nozzle and heating system for the filament is what? Micro Swiss, made in USA, uh, nozzle, heater, heat break, uh, custom heat break, titanium and copper, also a derivative, um, the evolution of the next shooter. And it's their newest generation of their high temperature, high precision heater. Okay. Uh, 350C constant, very low PWM rates, 30%, 25%. On well, heating, great. heating power Stay, for, and staying within a yeah, and it's good a it's huh? a ring heater PTC, but it doesn't back off in that wattage very much at all. So we have a lot of overhead. I print uh, PC CF at 320C, and my PDWM is still very very low. I'm really, very, very very happy with it. Oh, them, yeah. that's cool. I actually made my own heater and everything uh, before, but I don't know why I didn't give them more credit and more chance. And I just oh. like why don't I just call them? <laughs> I call them. The owner answered the phone. Vitaly, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two minutes, I'm off the phone. He sent the order. I, 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 three, <laughs> three days later, they're, they're at my front door. That's how it's done. Well, I mean, as That's someone who I likes like to, to make things, I mean, it makes sense that you would think about that. Yeah. It was amazing. But now, so, but now there's a better way with Micro Swiss. Yeah. Now, what kind of cooling system is this? This is like a standard a, CPAP. Okay, CPAP. Uh, right. But I do have uh, some pretty tube, black color tube, because you know yeah. it has to fit the motif here. But it isn't <laughs> a, a printed TPU like isolated dampened box to kind of. Uh, reflect back those noises back inside and and keep it out of your room. Okay, is this is the CPAP going right now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that's not bad. Oh my gosh, that's it. Good job on that baffling, man. Thank that you. is. Thank you. Because the experience I have with CPAP fans is obviously it's like an airplane taking off. 
Yeah. And this is not that. No, no, it's not. I don't, um, I don't like noises, it always bothered me. My father was a pilot and he would always have me go find the noise in the back of the car and stop it. <laughs> so, <laughs> everybody thinks they need a higher flow hot end. Uh, we purposely kept this about 36 millimeters. You can go much longer on the hot end, but it was really important for me. First was print quality. The speed was just a consequence of its minimalism and its high voltage okay. and things like that, yeah. it being stable. But the print quality was first. So I wanted a solid retract, perfect flow, close to perfect as possible. And that 36-ish millimeter range was the sweet spot for me. The other thing I wanted to ask though, is this is a, an open air design. I know, I know we've seen a lot of newer machines go towards a, a boxy design, even the, the core one from your previous company. And is, is there a reason you kept it open air or are you looking to enclose this later? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, yes. cool. Um, and that's it, thank yes. you very much. We must do enclosure because some people need the enclosure, mm -hmm. but the reality is that 90, 95% of all the filament sales are PLA and PETG. That's true. And those do perform worse than an enclosure. Mm -hmm. So why is everybody using an enclosure? Because everyone know. thinks they want to use ASA or ABS, <laughs> but then in, okay. the end, in yeah. the end, it probably yeah. just stinks too much anyways, right? Yeah, it does. But, okay, yeah. so, but I know we need it. Some high performance filaments do need it. I run a draft shield. Everything in the hot zone is PCCF or nylon. Okay. I, it's done on an, on an unenclosed printer because I just use a draft shield. And inside of that draft shield, I stay very hot. Yeah, absolutely. But I know that some people want an enclosure and we will deliver one, but it was really important for me to just nail that bare bones chassis first and make sure that the frame performed well, not just the enclosure performing well. That, I, okay, that is awesome. Now, people are gonna ask me about the price mm -hmm. because something like this looks to be premium, right? <laughs> okay. It has a very premium feel to it. Yeah. And it has a, it also has a very premium feature set as far as its abilities to print at a certain quality at a certain speed. If people are gonna want this, how are they gonna do that? If they want it, they can already buy it. We've been manufacturing for the past couple months, uh, sold the first 30 kits. Okay, out of, out of Czech, where you're uh, at, out, right? of, out of Czech Republic. Um, the kit right now is 1300 bucks. US. US. There's a Rocky Mountain sale right now, 5% off too. Really? Yeah. And well, they, this will air after Rocky Mountain. Would you honor it for a few weeks? Yeah, I guess I can keep it open. Thank you. Yeah, and <laughs> then the pre-built machine's 1,500 bucks. I think it's still pretty competitive, pretty aggressive. That's, we, don't, we don't need much money in Czech Republic, you know? Well, I was expecting more. Like, thank you, I, I thank, honestly, you. thank you. I honestly thought that we well, were the, looking <laughs> at a 1999 sort of system. That's why it was easy to open source it also, because if someone wants to make it, it's gonna cost them so much more. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> You mentioned open source mm -hmm. um, on your website or yes. on a GitHub. Is that where the plans yes. are to build this? Yes. yes. Okay. But I mean, to be able to build it at the spec that you're delivering a product at, like you said, it's going to be a, a, a decent cost for them to get to that on their own. Yeah. I think if you try to produce one at a time, it'll cost you three times what I charge for it. And in Czech, we have very, very good plate. Uh, the, 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 the input material and machinists we have are just top notch and, and they're affordable. And they do a good job, I yeah. mean, I can tell. And the so, beer's cheap there, do you know? And the beer's cheap, the beer, the beer is wonderful in <laughs> Prague. The last time we were there, at Prague Maker Fair, I had a beer, it didn't cost me much at all, and it was wonderful. Yeah. The next step for this machine right here, I hear it's going to West 3D. But yeah. I, I hear after if it goes to West 3D, and any of the parts that were broke on the way to here, it might find its way to my studio for a bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I get to play with it. Um, but I do want Wes to kind of help out support in the USA and spare parts and service and to help out the US customers so they don't have to go to me to, in Czech Republic to buy everything and have yeah. good service and stuff. Well, sweet. Well, Nathan, this has been wonderful, but I want you to look in the camera and tell everybody where they can go to find out more about Stone Wolf and this machine. Stone-3D.com. Or just go on YouTube, look up Stone 3D, like that, no E. Stone, no E, no Stone e. 3D. We'll put a link down below too, okay. cool. you know, because cool. that'll make it easy to get cool. to. Thanks. Well, at the end, I always offer my audience a high five. Are you up for it? Let's do it. Well, no, hold on. Oh, I got to say words first. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Drink all the beer and check. And as always, high five. Go on. Oh, best one of the day. Solid.